Morning everybody, or afternoon, whatever time of day it is. Today I am making a little pot to go on this oven for my Tudor doll's house. So, I'm also going to be making a bucket in this video as well, but that's a little bit later on. To make my pot, I started by using this Fimo Effect clay, and it's got a metallic-y effect to it because I wanted it to look like a little metal pot. Now anyone who's been watching my videos previously will know that my doll's house has been taken back into the Tudor era so all of the items that I'm making for it are Tudor themed. So I looked at little pots from the Tudor era, there were a mix of shapes and sizes but I decided to go for one that looked almost like a little cauldron. But I found this Fimo clay so frustrating to use. This was the first time I'd used Fimo Effect Clay, but all of my other items that I'd made out of polymer clay, apart from the fish in last week's video, had been made using Fimo. But I found that this clay was really sort of slippery and it was hard and soft at the same time, which is a complete contradiction, but basically it just wouldn't hold its shape properly. I tried adding some Vaseline just to try and make it softer to manipulate because I was struggling to actually make any shape out of it. But this didn't help to make it soft, it just made it slippery. So I then added some corn flour to try and reverse that effect. Then I decided to make a little mould out of some tin foil, a structure to go inside it so that I could mould around it. So this did help, but I just found the whole process really frustrating. When I stretched it over the mould here it started to crack, the texture was just bizarre. If anyone else has ever used this Fimo Effect Clay, I'd love to hear what your experience of it was. I actually filmed this video ages ago, well before Christmas, in fact you can see the pumpkins that I was making in the background, so it'll have been probably around October time. So I got really frustrated with it and left it. And this clip here is probably about a month or so on. So this whole project I've been working on for months, basically. So, I decided to start afresh because that little cauldron pot just, oh, I, I didn't like the shape, I didn't like the texture, it just wasn't going right. So I needed to have a rethink. I headed to my garage to see what materials I had to try and get some inspiration. I found my dried poppy heads from when I made my miniature Tudor bed and I found this spray paint. So the one on the right is the black one and I thought I'll use that to make whatever I use the metal effect. I gathered together some lids from bottles. So this was from a little tonic water bottle and this was from a mouthwash bottle. And I decided to use these to try and make my pot and also my bucket. I used a twig for some legs. And then I glued these on using some Yoohoo glue. You'll see throughout the video that these legs fell off several times. Um, <laughs> they were very delicate and I tried not to use too much glue because obviously I didn't want to see loads of glue on the outside of my pot. By the way, as I'm recording this narration, I'm actually losing my voice a bit. Um, since the beginning of the day my voice just hasn't been right so I'm sat with a hot chocolate and um, hot chocolate just fixes lots of things doesn't it and it's delicious you should pause this video and go and get a hot chocolate too please remember to come back though if you go and get a hot chocolate don't forget come and watch to the end so this is the pot with the three little legs on I liked the shape of it and then here I'm just cutting out a milk bottle top just to take a little bit of plastic to make some tiny little handles. I stuck them on with the glue as well. Obviously this was a little bit um, delicate and intricate to do because they were tiny so I used some tweezers just to help position them in place. At this point I hadn't actually measured the size of this pot which was really silly wasn't it because it had to fit on the oven at the back in the little sort of indents that I'd made in the oven. Oh my cat's just arrived, hello! Oh she's just, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you've just heard her little paddy paws going straight across my keyboard and up onto the windowsill on the other side so that she can sit in the sunshine. Anyway, this bucket, so I'd started to make this bucket and I think I'd just completely forgotten that I was making something from the Tudor era because obviously you're not going to have a metal bucket that looks like a modern bucket in the Tudor era. Anyway, I'll go over that soon. 
My plan is to put the bucket under a dry sink at the side here. Now, these are two surfers, miniature surfers that came with the second doll's house that I bought second hand. My plan is to turn one upside down like this and to create a stonework effect over the top of it, which I will do in a future video. But can I have some advice please? I'd be really grateful if you could leave in the comments whether you think it should be this small one or the larger one. I'm edging towards a smaller one at the moment. I checked at this point that the pot fit and look at that, I'm so lucky, it fit perfectly. I hadn't tested it and actually the legs just fit exactly as I'd wanted them to. So once these were all dry I took them outside and sprayed them with this black metallic effect spray paint. But first of all I'm watching this back and thinking why did I do that on my patio? I am so glad that I didn't get any spray paint on my patio. But I don't know if you just spotted there. I'd done this on polystyrene to try and make sure that the spray paint didn't go onto the patio. But as soon as I sprayed it, the polystyrene started having some sort of reaction and kind of melted and the pot sank into it. Anyway, I did then realise that I shouldn't be doing this on the patio and I moved it over to the grass. But can you see here, the pot's just sunk right into the polystyrene. I left it to dry and then tried to get it off the polystyrene. I read the instructions and the warning on the labels of the spray paint, didn't mention anything about not being able to spray polystyrene. Um, I was using polystyrene simply because it was in my re it was, well, I don't think you can recycle polystyrene, but it was due to be um, thrown away and I didn't have any cardboard. So anyway, I dug it out, the little leg had got stuck inside the polystyrene when it had sunk down, so that was the leg falling off for the first time in this project. Um, and then I left it to dry again. And I teased it out of the polystyrene and I tried to get the leg out too. <laughs> the handle had come away as well. Um, if you're doing a similar project, obviously I would recommend using something else like cardboard to spray over. Although I don't know if I've misread the instructions on the spray paint. If you get your own spray, spray paint, read the instructions and the warnings properly first. So I glued these bits back on. You can see that there are some areas where the spray paint hasn't fixed and that is because that's where it got stuck against the polystyrene. Although I'm alright with that effect actually because it's meant to be aged, it's meant to be from the Tudor era. Okay, so with all legs back on and handles reattached it looked like this. I did think that Actually, it was perhaps a little bit too black when I sat it in the kitchen. Um, so this was the pot that had been a bit of a failure at the beginning of the video. And one of its legs had fallen off as well. Um, I wasn't having a very good time with legs, was I? I preferred the colour of the Fimo Effect Polymer Clear. So I decided to just turn this black down a little bit by adding a little bit of silver. This is just silver poster paint and I just used quite a dry brush to dab it on to make a mottled effect. Just to stop the pan looking quite so new. What do you think? Do you think that looks better? It also helped to hide the areas where the polystyrene had rubbed off the metallic spray paint. So now it was time to have a little rethink about the bucket. This pumpkin I was just using as a size guide, I think I want my bucket about that size, it looked right underneath that wooden settee that was upturned. So I cut out a little disc just to help me with what size I wanted the diameter of my bucket to be. My cat's just moved from the windowsill to my knee, so let the pairing commence. So I cut out some little strips as well from this watercolour paper, um, the paper's quite thick so it's like hard and this is what I was going to use for the leather straps that would go around the strips of wood of the bucket. I then got my palette and some paint, I didn't go for brown straight away because um, I wanted the leather to look aged so I decided to go for these two colours mixed together. However, the poster paint that I thought was more of a black colour actually turned out to be a navy blue. So I then decided to add some more colour to my palette to change the colour. So I had a little look on the internet to see what Tudor buckets would have looked like and what materials they were made out of. And then I decided to add some yellow ochre acrylic paint to my palette just to change the colour slightly.
The navy blue colour was quite strong so I then added a little bit of brown as well. I liked the effect of using this watercolour paper, I thought actually it did look quite like a leathery strap. time to cut out the wooden strips. I made the decision to cut out too many strips and what I did was I cut a selection of strips one size and then I cut out a selection of strips a different size because I wasn't sure what size or how many I needed to get all the way around the diameter of my bucket. I could have worked this out probably by using a piece of string and putting it around the diameter of the piece of card I'd done um, and seeing how long this measured but I thought I'd do it this way because then I'd have some spare strips anyway. So as you can see I've got three lots all with different sizes. This next step you, you may think what on earth are you doing? Basically I didn't want my wooden strips to be the colour that they were and for past projects I've always painted with the um, raw rumber acrylic paints but I thought actually I'm going to try a different method today. So I decided to soak these strips in coffee because I wanted them to take on the colour. We've all made treasure maps when we're younger, haven't we, by using tea bags or coffee to stain the paper. That was basically my thought process. I used three separate mugs because I decided to keep my three piles of wooden strips separate so that the sizes didn't get muddled up. And I made the coffee quite strong so as you can see I didn't add a lot of water. And I mixed the wooden strips in and then I left them to soak. So whilst they were soaking I went back to check on my little pot which was drying and I thought that the metallic silver paint had done a good job. Oh, oh, and this is where the leg fell off again because I dropped it. Yes, there we go. So I glued my leg back on. So whilst they were soaking I had a little tidy up because obviously when they were soaked and then dry it would be time to start putting the bucket together. of organisation for craft materials I've got this little box where I keep a pair of scissors, my little tiny nail scissors, my brad all, um, my craft knives and that comes in really handy to have them all together so if you are a crafter I would recommend having a tiny little box like this it's really helpful. I also have a few nail files in it and um, they come in useful for a lot of things. So whilst the wood was still soaking I got together my polymer clay and made these fish which you can see in the previous video. So my plan is that these fish will go onto the table in the kitchen of my doll's house and also into the little bucket and the pot that will sit on the oven. So, and I then decided which strips I wanted to use for my bucket and I decided that the ones that I'd cut vertically to make the strips slightly thinner were the ones that looked the best. So you can see there that there's two strips that are slightly taller and they're the strips that I'm going to put the rope through. They're not the ones that I'd push the brad all through because they're not split. Um, I then put some glue onto the strips. I decided to use the ones that I had painted rather than the ones that I'd soaked. And then I laid them across the strips of wood so that they could hold the strips together. Of course, I didn't let them dry properly before I started to try and make the shape of the bucket because I'm very impatient. But anyway, when they were ready, I curved them around to try and make the curve of the bucket. It was quite fiddly and intricate. And I used a tiny bit of glue on the seam where these two parts needed to connect and I then trimmed down the little strip that was the leather strip just into the right size. 
as you can see, it was still a little bit wet. Oh, oh, bless you, little cat. I don't know if you just heard that on the micro. Oh, sneezy. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, my cat just woke herself up with a sneeze. She's so cute. You're so cute. So here I decided that the bucket wasn't quite strong enough so I put some glue on the inside where you wouldn't see the glue just to try and hold it together a bit better. <laughs> this footage is really bad just because I popped my phone on whilst I was sat on the evening. Um, it dried and I decided to just file it down a little bit because it was very rough around the edges. I wanted it to stay quite rough because obviously it's meant to be a very old bucket um, but I didn't want it this rough, it wasn't standing quite straight. So I just used the nail file to sand it down. And I also decided that these bits were a little bit too tall, so I trimmed them down as well before adding the little piece of rope. What do you think? Did I make the right decision trimming them down that much? I'm not sure. Of course, I still had the issue with the fact that putting the hole in to attach the rope meant that it was probably going to split. The next day I did push some holes in with the brad on. If you can see there the wood has split slightly but I pushed this piece of paper that I'd soaked in coffee through to use as my piece of rope and at the moment the bucket still didn't have a base so that was the next step. So by this point the bucket was a slightly different size and shape to the base that I had initially made out of the watercolour paper so I just took a strip of cardboard and drew around the inside of the bucket to show its real shape. As you can see, it wasn't quite a perfect circle, but again, I was fine with that because it's meant to be a rustic bucket. And I then used some of the spare strips that I'd soaked in coffee to glue to this little piece of cardboard. So for anybody who's wondering, my bucket did smell of coffee and I like the smell of coffee, so I was happy with that. So when the strips were dry, I flipped it over and then I just used the same method that I'd used before to split the wood to cut around. Obviously it did still mean that it was going to be a little bit rough and not perfect around these edges, but this was going to slot inside the bucket so you wouldn't be able to quite see the edges. My cat is by my side throughout all of my crafting projects. Maybe my doll's house needs a cat. Did they have cats in the Tudor times as pets? I don't know. I think they had dogs. They had dogs for safety because obviously um, in terms of law and policing they had to protect their own properties. I learnt that when I went to Little Morton Hall. The base of this bucket fit absolutely perfectly. I was so pleased with it. I was going to be filling my bucket with resin because I wanted it to look like it had water in it. But what I decided to do first was actually fill it with a little bit of my glue because I was aware that there were some holes in the bucket and I didn't want the resin to leak out. So I decided that this quick setting glue would hopefully cover those holes and seal it a bit more. So I've never worked with resin before but my plan was to add some resin and then sit my little fish into the bucket and then add a bit more resin so that it looked like the, bu the bucket was carrying the fish that had been collected from the pond. And I also planned on adding some vegetables to my little pot so there's some carrots as well as the chunks of fish. Yeah, I was just testing kind of the composition of where I was going to put each of the things before adding the resin. 
headed outside for the next step because I'm aware that resin is toxic so I wore a mask over my mouth and I wore goggles, I wore gloves. If you're using resin please always read the warnings and the instructions. So I'm not actually using expensive resin here. I found this super strong epoxy resin in the pound shop for a pound and basically it has two cylinders of um, of whatever it is, the, I don't know what the liquids are, and when they mix together it hardens. So I was outside, my cat was inside, um, and I was taking every safety precaution that I could, and I just squeezed the two components into the little pot. I'd never used this before, um, well I'd used it once to try and stick something, but I can't remember what it was, uh, so that's why the package looks a little bit like it's been leaking but I've not really used it properly for anything. I can't remember what it was that I used it for initially. Can you? Have I, did I use it in one of my videos? It was a really windy day, so I popped a brick on here to stop it from flying away. And you'll be able to see that I've got a wooden stick there. It's just one of those kebab skewers that I've used for loads of things, crafty, and I had that for mixing. As you'll appreciate, this bit was pretty difficult to film and I was absolutely concentrating on staying safe and getting the resin in exactly the place that I wanted it. So I'm sorry that bits are out of focus. As I mixed the two components together, I was surprised because they seemed to harden quite quickly and kind of um, develop into a, sort of a ball shape, but actually it did then settle down and it looked liquidy again. So I put a base there in and then positioned my fish and my carrots into the little pot, although I realised that I'd put my carrot upside down and I didn't like it like that, so I did flip it over um, and then in a few seconds I do exactly the same thing again with another bit that I was adding to the pot and I put it in upside down. I wasn't sure how long this would take to set, um, but I didn't want to rush and do the same thing that I'd done with my frame where I did it too fast. So I took my time and thought what will be, will be. I was happy with how it was looking. I was also very aware that if I made a mistake, Oh, my cat's back walking across the keyboard. Um, I was very aware that if I made a mistake, I would basically be ruining the pot and the bucket that I'd spent so long making. But sometimes you've got to take the risks, haven't you, to then achieve what you want to achieve. This part was a bit tricky where I tried to add some more resin on top of some of the items that I'd just pushed in. I think if I was to do this again, I would fill the little pot more full of resin in the first place before adding the components into it because what I was struggling to do was to mix the resin that I'd just added without moving all the items that I'd added in. And as you can see there, it looks like it's quite thick and viscous. Um, thankfully, as I mixed it, it did then settle just like before and it developed a flat layer rather than sitting on top of the blob. Next it was time to work on the bucket and I was just going to sit one fish into the bucket this time. Um, I did initially think about just popping the resin straight into the bucket like this but actually the opening to the bucket was too narrow for this. So instead what I did was I squirted it out onto this container lid and then I used my kebab skewer to mix it on the lid and then scoop it into the bucket. Unfortunately at that point my camera battery went flat so I missed the actual putting the resin into the bucket um, but this is what it looked like. So I've ended up with these fish from the last video that I've kept spare to put onto the table and then here's my little pot full of its ingredients. As you can see that resin really settled down 
and here's my little bucket with its fish inside. It's quite hard to video because they're so small. If you look at the size of my thumb, they're about the size of my my thumb, just a little bit taller. So they're pretty hard to film so that you can see the intricacies of them. Um, but I placed them into my doll's house with a little pot on the back and I'm really glad I turned it down so it wasn't quite so matte black. Um, and then I popped the bucket here, but as I say, I want to make my little stone sink to sit there next to it. So this is what I'm thinking. That's the small version, but if you think I should do the longer one, then please do let me know. Um, thank you so much for watching. Here's some pictures of the kitchen with everything that I've made for it. I still want to change the carrot tops actually, the carrot tops I don't like at all, um, so that's something to do one day. But thank you for watching, let me know what you think, I love reading all of your comments. If you're new to my channel, please remember to hit subscribe and I will try and post a video every Wednesday. And have a lovely day!